Let's, uh, let's talk off the field. There is a great article written on you, <laughs> reluctantly it seems, uh, in the LA Times Magazine in December. And uh, talked about some of the things you do in the community and off the field. Uh, I'd like you to take a minute since people in this room are either going to be wildly successful or are already wildly successful and talk about serving others and how do you adopt your philosophy to off the field. Can you tell us about uh, A Better LA and what it means to you? Yeah, a few years back um, driving to work on Figueroa, I was listening to the radio in the morning and heard the, the, the accounts of kids getting killed in the streets. It's kind of like it is right now. There's a, there's a real rash going on right now. And by the end of the week, by Thursday of that week, there was 11 kids that had been killed in a four or five day span, you know, and, and I called up a real good friend of mine, Lou Tice, who runs the Pacific Institute up in Seattle. And he's a, it's a company that they're an agent for change. They teach cultures how to change their, their mindsets and, and adjust and on. We've been great friends and always talked about doing something. I say, hey, Lou, this is it. We got to do something. We, we, we have to help. We, we, kids are dying in these streets. Let's figure out a way. Let's do something. He says, okay, no, no sweat. I'm in. You know, we, so that's where, that's where the thought started. And, and very, very early on, we had the thought that, that there's kids out there calling shots in the neighborhood that are, that are leading other kids to do some crazy things, man. And, and whether they're robbing and stealing or whether they're shooting each other or whatever they're doing, selling drugs or whatever to, to make their way. There was some leadership in that community that if with, you know, with a charisma that could make people jeopardize their future and their life and all that, they had to be powerful. And if we could ever get to those guys and turn those guys, we would be able to turn those that followed them. So that was really the goal of, of what we wanted to try to create with Better LA. It took us a few years to figure it out, to get exactly to the right source, but we finally found a guy named Bo Taylor who had been working in the communities and intervention works for years, 15 years of, of, of service. And, and uh, we came together and I told him, I'm going to do everything I can to pay for your guys and let, let's see if we can create a Peace Corps, an army of guys, I hate to use the word army in this sense, but a, a Peace Corps of guys in, that could go into the community and, and spread the word, that could be aware, that could be of the community, from the community, that could have the sense of what's going on that nobody else could have and make these guys pay them and make them most valuable players in their community and that they would be able to know what's going on, head things off, uh, minimize retaliations and, and, and turn kids and the whole thing. And we, we, we had the premise that, that uh, what's going on in the streets is very much like terrorism. You know, it's like terrorists operating in the world. You know, it doesn't take very many terrorists to, to frighten everybody. And if, if you could ever get to the core of these guys and find them, well, you, you can snuff it out at a very, in, in very accurate uh, approach. In the same fashion, we went out and number those kids in a, say it's a four or 5,000 uh, people small community, there's about 30 to 40 kids that are really active. There's a few more that are related, but there's really two or three and maybe one or two that are calling the shots. And it's not that hard to outnumber those guys. Now, nobody else, you know, law enforcement hasn't done it this way. They've, they've tried to arrest their way out of it. They've done everything they can, and they have totally thrown up their hands. They, they all have give, they're all given up. They have a job to do, and you know, they need some other aspect of it. So what we're doing right now is that is what our, our mission is, is, is to find uh, the, and recruit the guys in the neighborhood, give them the training and the preparation and, and, and the opportunity to be paid and get and having a legitimate job of working in those communities and turn these kids around and, and, and be the force that can be the conduit for law enforcement in the aspects that, that they can handle and they can deal with. They're still going to have to arrest kids, but you can't arrest your way out of the problem. So we're going to try to overwhelm them and create a critical mass in each community and, and we're doing it on, in a pilot sense and really uh, uh, for, the, for Lee Baca, for uh, Chief Bratton and Charlie Beck, and, and for you know, Jeff Carr, the gangs are uh, that's here in, in, in the area. Eventually, we'll we'll talk to the to the uh, the real politicos, the uh, you know, the mayor and those other guys. We don't want those guys right now. You know, we want to do the work and get it going without all of that falling and, and prove that we have a philosophy that can get this done where nobody else does right now. So that's what we're going after, and we have. Uh, you know, a tremendous fundraising campaign going on, and we, we've been supported by some extraordinary people already. We need a lot more money, but, but it's still working and going. And matter of fact, there's some guys up in the front row here that, from the SUMA group that are supporting a big fundraiser in the most first-class fashion on April 23rd that will be a huge hit for us. And uh, uh, th then really, the, the idea of this is if we want to prove that we can do it right here in L.A., and if we can prove that we can shift culture in LA in this, in this, with this approach, and of the community, from the community, people that are going to stay and, and live in that community to make it work right, then we, we're, we're developing a model for wherever we want to go. And I really believe that we have one of the most vivid illustrations going on in Iraq right now.
It's, it's out there for you. We tried to bring in the forces. We tried to come in and bomb them and scare them and, 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 and find them and arrest them and shoot them and kill them and everything you could possibly do, and that can't be right. It, didn't, it hasn't worked, and there's no way that, that culture, those cultures could shift in a productive manner until the people decide that they want to shift, and they have, they have the opportunity to see the way that they can shift, and we didn't go about that in anywhere near the right fashion. So if we can prove it here, who knows? You know, sky's the limit. That's great. That's great.